Hey Freebs Nation, Jordan Page with FunCheaperFree.com here. I am in my fancy pantsy new office and today we are talking about budgeting and how to never go over budget again. Mm-hmm, I'm serious, mm-hmm. around here then let me introduce myself hi I'm Jordan I am a budgeting guru I have a budget program called budgetbootcamp.com and for the last 10 years I've been sharing my budgeting and frugal living and finance tips on Rachel Ray Good Morning America the Today Show on my blog I do in-person events and conferences and I speak all over the country it is so much fun but here's one thing you should know about me I am terrible at budgeting I'm terrible at math I don't enjoy it. I did not study finance. This is not something that comes naturally to me. Wait, before you turn off the video, hear me out. Just because I don't naturally enjoy them or I'm not naturally good at them doesn't mean that I don't need to focus on budgeting, right? And either do you. Welcome to adulthood. Whether we like it or not, we all need to make money to survive and we all need to manage that money well in order to thrive. Okay, that was really good. That was off the cuff. We need to put that on a t-shirt. Somebody write that down. So today I'm going to share with you five of my super quick top tips for not only like setting a budget, but for never going over a budget again. Now, do not get me wrong. Just because you're setting a budget does not mean that you can't spend money or do anything fun forever. I am not that kind of budget guru. I really like myself some nails and cute clothes. Let's be honest. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you never to spend money again. I'm telling you how to set practical, actual budgets that you will practically and actually keep. You excited? You should be. But before we move on, for those of you who love these tips or just want even more hand-holding and more help, please check out my budgeting program, budgetbootcamp.com. Use the promo code YouTube for 10% off because I like you. All right, now let's get on with the tips. All right, so budget tip number one is simplify. I cannot stress this enough. As with anything in life, if you try to make it too intricate, too complicated, too fancy schmancy, it will not be sustainable. You will not be able to keep it up. When we were first getting out of debt, we tried everything. None of it really worked. It wasn't until I came up with my own system that was so simple, it was just easy to do. I call it my budget envelope system. Now, this is different than cash envelopes, so don't be tricked just because it's in an envelope. This is my own fancy schmancy envelope that we sell on my website. I will link it below, but you can do this with any envelope. It does not have to be this cute fancy one, but I mean, it is really cute. Like, look, it has gold on it. Ooh! But instead of focusing on 10,000 different budgets and all these different cash envelopes for a pet envelope and a hair envelope and an eating out envelope and a nails envelope and a... Stop. All I want you to do is have two budgets that you focus on every week. Now you're gonna have other budgets and we teach this in budget boot camp because you need a budget for like your mortgage or your extracurricular activities. But I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about what you have control over, what you spend money on week to week. That's what I want you to focus on. Like groceries, eating out, clothing, general shopping, Amazon. Amazon, slow down, honey. Those are the expenses and that's the spending that will make or break your budget. I want you now to take that and break it into only two categories, two. That is it. The first one will be whatever you spend the most money on. For me, that is groceries and food. So I am calling that your main budget. Your main budget is whatever you spend the most money on week to week. The second budget, you ready for this? Other, your other budget, and that means everything else. Oh, so simple, what? Basically, give yourself a budget each week. Is it $200 a week that you have for groceries or eating out or shopping? Is it $50 a week? Is it $500 a week? Choose an amount and then just split it up into just two budgets so you have enough for whatever you need to spend money on, but then it gives you an amount left that you can spend on whatever else. You need to get your nails done that week? Great. You need to get your dog groomed that week? Great flexibility and simplifying is so important. So to summarize, instead of having eight million cash envelopes and all these different budgets that you're managing, 
Your week to week spending, you're going to break into two budgets, two, and you're going to track it on an envelope. I'm not going to take time to teach you how to do this. I have an entire video on this, but by tracking it on an envelope, it will make it so that you never go over budget again. I promise. And this actually segues into tip number two, which is to budget by week, not by month. Now, again, we're talking about the spending that you do day to day, week to week. Let's say you're on a diet. How come you wouldn't count your calories? an entire month at a time. Well, because that would be a really high number and a lot to manage and 30, 31 days is really hard for your brain to compute. Whereas one day at a time or seven days at a time is so much more manageable. It's the same with your money. Instead of giving yourself a budget, let's say that's a thousand dollars for the whole month for everything. Well, guess what? By day six, you're just like, you don't even know what today is. You don't even know how much money you have left. It's so much to manage and track. Break it down. Let's say you have $1,000 a month for your week-to-week -week spending, and that includes groceries and entertainment and eating out, whatever else. Great, $1,000, break it down per week. You're only tracking $250 week one, $250 week two, three, and four. 500, 500, that's $1,000. Yes, I count like that on my fingers in real life. I told you, I'm not very good at math. $250 over six or seven days is so much more manageable than $1,000 over 30 or 31 days. And then again, go back to tip one and take it one step farther and split that $250 into two. It's only six or seven days that you need to manage. And then guess what? Monday comes and woo, your money starts all over again. And you only have to track that for six or seven days. I show you exactly how to break this down on a simple envelope. If you go to the link below, it's a quick video here on YouTube that'll change your life. The reason we do an envelope is not only for easy tracking, but it's really small and it usually will fit right inside your wallet or your purse or your backpack. Also, it's important because as you go shopping, you can stick your receipts in here so that if you lose track or you need to return something, it's all in one place. One thing to note about my budgeting system is you do not have to use cash. Once you get a handle on your credit cards, I actually prefer digital payments like credit cards or debit cards because then you have digital right record of everything you spent money on. And if you lose your card or it gets stolen, you just cancel it. If you lose your cash, it's just gone. It's just gone. So get a handle on your credit cards. Don't overspend. And then as soon as you have a handle on them, go ahead, use those cards. They work great with my envelope system. Again, link below. I'll show you how. Urge, stop everything. <laughs> I have a bonus tip for you. I want to add something about my tip of budgeting per week and not per month. And really, the bread and butter of this, the creme de la creme, is that you need to take that weekly budget and be as frugal with it as possible. Because if you're just like maxing out your budget every single week, it's better than overspending. But really, what you need to do is get frugal. So this is kind of a sub tip, if you will. We'll call it tip two. A, take your budget for the week and squeeze it. Use coupons, use apps, buy things on sale, buy something used, get creative with your budget and find every way you can to squeeze every dollar. Use money saving apps. For me, one of my favorite money saving apps is Fetch Rewards. It's a completely free app. It doesn't cost you a dime. And if you guys follow me on Instagram, you see me talking about it a ton because it saves my family so much money. All you do is you go shopping as you normally do, grocery shopping or otherwise. You take your receipt, you scan it into the app and you get rewards totally for free that you can then turn into gift cards. So for me, every single week when I order my groceries, whether I get a physical receipt or whether I get an e-receipt, I scan it into the app, it gives me rewards, and I love to get Amazon gift cards personally, and then I turn around and use those gift cards to buy things like diapers and baby items, and guess what? When I buy diapers off of Amazon, I can scan that receipt and get extra rewards for that, so it's just a cyclical saving that is genius. genius. One thing that's really cool about Amazon is you can actually connect it directly so that qualified purchases automatically give you rewards and bonuses. I have a unique link below. Be sure to click that link, sign up for Fetch, Use my code for 2,000 bonus points. Keep it on your phone, keep it active, and anytime you go shopping, be sure to scan your receipts, e-receipts, or physical receipts, and it can be anywhere, grocery shopping, physical stores, even Amazon, and turn those into gift cards. And that, my friends, is how you maximize your weekly budget. Boom. All right, budget tip number three is, are you ready for this one? It's a doozy. Open at least seven bank accounts. Seven, you heard me right. 
seven. This is where a lot of people stop listening because they think, man, this chick is crazy. I mean, you wouldn't be wrong, but hear me out. Traditionally, the way our grandparents and our parents banked, they would drive their buggy to the bank and walk inside and fill out a deposit slip and get along their merry little way and then go plant some more corn. Welcome to 2020, folks. Banking is a little more slick than that. Not only does it not cost you money or any hassle at all to open bank accounts, but in a lot of situations, you can actually get paid to open bank accounts. And the technology is awesome. To have multiple bank accounts, think of it like a filing cabinet. Let's say you have one drawer on the top that represents your checking account, one drawer on the bottom that represents your savings account. If you open at least seven bank accounts, it's like adding file folders to the drawer. So let's say your savings drawer, you open it up. You could have a savings account just for Christmas. It's there when you need it. Same with checking. I have a checking account for me. Bubba has a checking account for him so that all of our financial responsibilities for the week that I'm in charge of, that money automatically drafts into there every week. So when I need to spend money on whatever's on my envelope that week, I just use my debit card for that account or my credit card and pay the credit card bill from my account. The more bank accounts you have, the more organized and manageable your money is. I promise this works. I have a video that goes into way more detail on this because I'm sure you have a lot of questions. If you want to know more and how to do this accurately, just go to that video. I promise it breaks everything down. All right, budget tip number four is get yourself a budget planner. You need to have something physical that you're keeping track. This could be a digital spreadsheet on Google Sheets that you create. This could be a journal from TJ Maxx that you just customize yourself or Oh, what? I designed the coolest budget planner in the history of ever? Oh, weird. If you want to, you can buy one of my fancy schmancy budget planners that does come with an entire year's worth of envelopes and I will link these below. But listen, however you wanna do it, I'm not saying that you have to buy this in order to budget properly. I just, I mean, this book is pretty amazing. It has everything. It has debt tracker, savings tracker. It shows you how to divide up financial responsibilities without fighting with your spouse. It has weekly tracking and check-in. I mean, it's pretty amazing. If I do say so myself. <laughs> but fancy budget planner aside, get yourself something that tracks it. You need to physically write down your goals. You need a physical place to put the envelopes when you're done tracking what you're spending. You need a place that every week, and then again, at the end of every month, you are going back and reviewing your numbers and making sure that you're staying on track. This is not as daunting as it sounds. Every Sunday night, Bubba and I sit down and we plan our week and we plan our meals or whatever, and we're just casually doing that. It's not a big deal, it doesn't take very long, and along with that, we do a weekly weigh-in. We got that term from The Biggest Loser, where every week, they do their work, they do what they need to do, and then once a week they go with their trainers and they stand on the scale and see how they did. You gotta know how you did. In my budget planner, I actually have a weekly weigh-in page every single week. Let's chat about wins for the week. Family expenses and budgets. How did your budget go? How did my budget go? Ask yourself those questions. Report on how your own budget went. The more often you talk about money, the more often you look at your real numbers, the less scary it is and the more on track you're gonna be and the more on the same page you are. Last but not least, and probably the most important tip of all is give yourself some spending money, for goodness sakes. There's a difference between saying, I need to lose weight, I am never going to eat sugar again for as long as I live, and I need to lose weight, so I'm gonna eat healthier, so I'm going to allow myself one treat every day after dinner as long as I eat it before 7 p.m. What is the difference? The difference there is moderation and a realistic expectation. If you came to me and said, you cannot spend money for the next six months, I would say, yeah, right. But if you came to me and you said, look, you have $15 a week to spend on whatever you want. Then I would say, ooh, okay, what can I get for $15 this week? And then guess what? Seven days later, I get 15 more dollars. Or if there's something I want that's $60, I just need to wait a couple weeks and then I have plenty of money to buy it. Do not set a budget and then spend money on the side being like, oh, well, this isn't part of the budget. I'll just spend it on the side. It has to come from somewhere, guys. And that's why this other budget is so important. The more responsible you are, the more money you have for things you 
want to spend money on. If you love, love going to the movies, then work it into your budget. Otherwise, what's gonna keep you motivated? If you work spending into your budget, you'll never go over budget. Again, keeping in mind that if you have credit card debt, you really do need to stop spending on frivolous things. I am gonna say that, that you really do need to put every dime and just get those credit cards paid off. They are costing you money every single day. It is keeping you from that family vacation. It is keeping you from that new car. So just hit it hard. You can do it. I know you can. Those are my five simple ways to never go over budgeting again. And I know we covered a lot. Check out all my other videos for tons more budgeting and lifestyle tips like this. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye. You can have a hair cutting envelope and a babysitting envelope and a dog food envelope and a big plant envelope and a snow plow envelope. And you can have a budget for groceries and a budget for eating out. You can have a budget for cereal and a budget for old school ladies clothes.